This is lecture number seven, which is uh, the stages of World War II. So let me just get started. It's a brief lecture. Uh, it'll be uh, expanded upon by Professor Carl Creesman when he comes in from the Humanities Department. Um, taking a look at the stages of World War II, uh, I'm going to throw some statistics out you, at you so that you have a, a better understanding of the magnitude of this war that was going on in the background of the uh, Holocaust. Uh, we estimate that between 20 and 30 million deaths occurred uh, in World War II, um, at least. 10 million soldiers, and that was just in the USSR, I should say. 10 million soldiers died in the USSR, 3,600,000 prisoners of war, 7 million citizens. Uh, in Poland, we have 6 million soldiers and civilians, 3 million of them being Jews. Uh, in Britain, we have 264,433 soldiers and 61,000 civilians lost their lives. In the United States, we have 362,561 soldiers uh, who lost their lives. And in Australia, 27,000. Uh, gypsies, about 250,000. In Germany, 3,600,000 soldiers died and 3,250,000 civilians. Of that group, 250,000 were killed as a result of the T4 program, which was Nazis' way to purify their race, uh, the euthanasia program, by taking mental or physically handicapped people and uh, murdering them. So if we take all of the countries together, it's estimated that about 40 to 60 million people uh, died during the war, most of them being civilians. So it's important that we teach about uh, World War II as a backdrop to the Holocaust occurring uh, at the same time. If you go to a bookstore and look in the books about World War II, you're going to look in the index and you'll look for Holocaust or Jew, and you're going to see how little is really uh, covered uh, on those two topics in a book on World War II. Sir Martin Gilbert has written an excellent book called The Second World War. The Nazis practiced something called Liebensborn. Liebensborn was where the women were checked for purity, and then they were forced to have sex with what they considered pure German officers to produce pure Aryan babies for the uh, Third Reich. In the stages of World War II, let's kind of take it chronologically. September 1939, Germany's already had uh, been aggressive and uh, annexed uh, and taken Austria and uh, Czechoslovakia. But in September 1st of 1939, uh, they invade Poland. And World War II officially starts, although Carl will tell you that World War II started a long time before that as far as conflicts were concerned. But this is the physical start of the war. Blitzkrieg War takes place, which is a concentration of air and land divisions together uh, forcing uh, a total all-out attack on the enemy. Poland had only a cavalry at the time. Its army was on horseback. The United States they had the army and the air force as one unit. We did not have a separate army and air force as at that point. And Poland's allies, people, countries who had pledged to, you know, be friends of Poland if anything ever happened, were drawn into the war as a result of Poland being attacked by the Nazis. 200,000 Polish soldiers died in the battle in which the Nazis um, took over the country. Bombing went on day and night. And by the end of September, the major cities, especially the capital Warsaw, was in total ruins. On Yom Kippur, the high holy day of the Jewish calendar, the Jewish section of Warsaw was attacked and the synagogues were burned down with the um, Jews in it praying during the holiday. By October 2nd of 1939, the Germans marched uh, into Warsaw totally and uh, Pol the Polish army surrendered. The power of the German army was awesome. It was the largest conscripted army in the history of warfare. Uh, it had the most forces in the east to invade Poland. Had the Allies attacked Germany from the west, Germany might have been stopped. Now, Britain and France declared war to defend Poland, of course, due to the treaties they had with Poland. In the 1930s, many German soldiers were trained in the Soviet Union because as a result of World War I, Germany had been punished at the Treaty of Versailles. They had to limit the size of their military. So they trained soldiers secretly in the Soviet Union. Uh, 
Hitler had an agreement with Stalin, the head of the Soviet Union, to give him back half of Poland that he lost to the British and the French in World War I. Hitler took the German army from, in 1939, three million men, to 1943, in a matter of four years, 13 million soldiers, the largest conscripted army in the world. Hitler next takes over Norway, Belgium, Holland, and France, and sets up a puppet government in France with the French leaders, but they are basically under the control of Hitler. From September 39 to April 1940, something occurs which is called a phony war. Nobody's really attacking Germany. In April of 40, Hitler takes Germany uh, and attacks Norway, Belgium, Holland, and France, as I said. France falls within a month and a half, and this is seen as the ultimate conquest for Hitler. Norway and Denmark and France fall, followed by Britain, which fights back fiercely with the leadership of Winston Churchill. And in the summer of 1940, what occurs is a major battle called the Battle of Britain. And because Britain was an island uh, surrounded by the English Channel, Germany could only use air power, it could not use land attacks on them. So in 1936, the Brit British developed something that we still use today, it's called radar, and they set up a network of radar stations, uh, and then they send their Spitfire planes up into the air to meet the German Air Force, the German Luftwaffe. Britain loses 800 planes, Germany loses 2,500 planes. Operation Sea Lion then takes place. Germany, Germans uh, amass their ships to invade England, but they didn't have enough air coverage to accomplish this, or a way to get them to the beaches to launch them. So the operation is then called off. In June of 1941, opposed to the treaty that he had signed earlier, Hitler invades um, the Soviet Union. Two-thirds of the German army and most of the Luftwaffe is devoted to the attack on the, not, on the uh, Soviet Union. The Soviets, the Red Army as it's called, fights back desperately for at least three months, but the Soviet Union is eventually overrun by the German army. The German army does meet violent resistance, and a policy known as the Scorched Earth Policy occurs, fighting until total destruction of the enemy's land takes place. The Russian terrain proved very difficult for the Nazis. Uh, the Russians were used to the very harsh and snowy uh, winters. And in December of 1941, uh, Moscow sent 100 fresh military divisions to fight against the Germans. In an operation called Operation Barbarossa, German, Germany, with their allies, sent 287 divisions, 3 million soldiers, in. They fought valiantly to try and defeat the Soviets. Many Soviets were Bolsheviks, and Hitler saw the Jews as being Bolsheviks. In May 41, Churchill tells Stalin that Operation Bo Barbarossa is un underway, but Stalin does not believe him. He does not believe that Germany would actually attack him. So there were 700,000 Germans killed in the battles. Close to 2.5 million Russians fall in the battle with the Germans as POWs, prisoners of war. Now, December the 7th, 1941, Japan attacks. Pearl Harbor, the United States is drawn in. December 12th, Germany is drawn in by attacking uh, declaring war on the United States, something that it's Hitler's uh, high command did not want to do. And in June of 1942, Hitler's deep offensive, uh, deep into Russia, he invades now North Africa and Stalingrad and Egypt. In November of 42 to January of 43, American troops land uh, on the west coast of North Africa and start the turning point of the war in the defeat of the 6th German Army. And on December the 31st, 1942, an estimated 4 million Jews have already been systematically murdered by the Nazis in a year and a half. Jews are unable to escape the war. Uh, war is waging all around them. The Germans were all over. And the ghetto seemed like a safe place to stay for many of them. Thank you.